Hey, it's Whitney from EcoVeganGal.com and welcome back to another FAQ. This one is something I think all of you will be able to relate to, whether you've already figured out the answer or you have been trying to figure it out. It's actually something that I have been working on my entire time as a vegan and vegetarian even. And the question was, how do you communicate why you're a vegetarian or vegan to people who are not without coming across rude or snobby or self-righteous? Um, I want to read you this email that I received because it was really well written and I think a lot of you will be able to relate to it. But if you want to skip through it, just uh, see the note that I added in in this video down here. It'll tell you what time to skip forward to so you can, you know, if you don't have a lot of time. So the question came from Colby. She's 16 years old and she recently became a vegetarian. She said she's a big supporter of animal rights and decided about a month ago from today that vegetarianism, vegetarianism would be a great personal choice that would make a positive difference. Absolutely. Um, however, her family is quite skeptical about it because they don't think that she's gaining enough protein and vitamins, even though she's tried to explain that it's actually, giving up meat is actually a healthy choice um, that's also beneficial to the environment and the planet. She's done a ton of research, she's found great recipe books, but her mom's biggest concern is the social aspect to it. She's afraid that vegetarianism can come across rude and snobbish, especially if you're invited out for dinner, for example, at someone else's home. She understands the perspective, um, Colby that is, and uh, she doesn't want to hurt someone else's feelings because she can't eat something that they've served her. So she wants to know how do you explain to someone who is not vegetarian or vegan in a compassionate and patient way that you have made the decision to become a vegetarian. She doesn't want to make other people feel that they are a bad person for choosing to eat meat or that she will think less of them. She says this is supposed to be a positive choice but sometimes she feels like she is hurting others more than she is helping to save the innocent lives of other living creatures. Um, that is probably something all of us, like I said earlier, can really relate to. Okay, well, it really comes down to, to what I say personally, but first of all, I want to point out this video up here. Um, it's a link to uh, Colleen Patrick Goudreau's uh, speech that, or lecture that she gave um, at this vegetarian festival that I went to, and she had some really great words to say about this sort of situation, but she says it in a very straightforward and almost like a harsh way. And I really respect that, but sometimes being harsh is, is a little too much for some people. And it sounds like Colby, and I'm sure many of you can relate to wanting to be a little bit softer. That's personally my perspective. As passionate as I am, I don't like making other people uncomfortable. And I'm also the type of person that wants everyone to get along, that wants to please everyone, even though it's pretty much impossible. So what do I do? Well, you know... It's actually something that you can take into account in most aspects of your lives. And what I work on in general, and not just with my diet, but my whole lifestyle and everything that I do, is, is really trying to listen to people first and foremost. A lot of times people just want to be heard. And a lot of times the things that they're saying to you are defenses, basically or um, confusion, and sometimes it's the other person's way of asking questions or talking to you about your lifestyle that are really nothing to do with you or veganism or vegetarianism. It's, it's, it's a lot based on insecurities. Uh, our diets have so much confusion around them in, in general. You know, we've got marketing all over the place, we've got historical roots, we've got traditional roots, we've got influences, um, you know, there's just so much going on. And, and it's great to do the research to be able to support the fact that scientifically, medically, there's a lot of evidence that going vegetarian and or vegan um, can really benefit us from health levels if we do it right, if we're eating correctly. Now what do you do when you're at someone else's home and they serve you something or you plan to go to someone's home and they ask you about your diet and as soon as that you tell them that you're vegetarian or vegan, there's, there's this awkwardness. Well, you know, for me, I just try to stay very happy and mellow and easygoing about it all. Um, I offer to bring my own food, to cook my own food. If they are really insistent about doing it themselves, then just give them a few tips. Say, you know, I can eat salad, I could have pasta, I can have most breads. Uh, 
you know, and every once in a while, you've got to make that personal decision about when you get somewhere, and maybe they've made pasta, but the pasta has egg in it. Or maybe they've bought some bread, but the bread has honey or cheese in it. And it's up to you. Do you still kind of not have it because it's not vegan in those instances? It's still vegetarian, which is easier. Um, I don't know. I, I don't feel comfortable eating egg or dairy products, so I usually politely turn it down. And, and that's those are kind of the learning lessons that next time you say, well, you know, I, I can eat pasta, but I just can't eat egg pasta. And I can eat bread, but it's got to be plain, you know, wheat or white breads um, instead of anything with honey or cheese on top of it. And just be very clear about that. And uh, if I think that that general attitude of just being easygoing about it will make people feel more relaxed. But a lot of times we'll start asking questions. You know, I deal with this with my grandma, for example. But with her, you know, she gets all worried about it. She doesn't know what to have. And I say, you know, it's okay, Grandma. Don't worry about it. I'll be fine. I'm going to bring myself some my own food, and I'm sure I'll be able to find something in your kitchen. That's another thing you can do. If, if you're comfortable with the people, ask if you can go into the kitchen and take a look around and help them cook. You know, see what they have. And, and it would be a great opportunity to educate them as well. Oh, I can have this. And naturally, they're probably going to ask you why. So practice your, your verbiage, your wording. How do you explain to them in a way that's not turning it down? So use positive words instead of negative. Instead of saying, well, meat does this to you. Say, well, the vegetables do this to you. And talk about the benefits of vegetables. And talk about how you felt better, how you're looking better. Have you lost weight? Has your skin cleared up? Do you have more energy? And, and all that positive stuff. Don't bring up the negative things. I have to find that the animal side of it, although it's huge for us as vegetarians and vegans, is a little tough in a social situation where you haven't spoken about it with somebody yet. So I tend not to bring it up too much because I find that the health side of things is much easier for people to understand and relate to and get excited about. Unfortunately, the animal side of it is not something that our society has implemented in our heads. You know, unfortunately, we've kind of got into this almost brainwashed point where we don't feel bad about it, uh, which is a whole other story. And environmental factors as well, it's, it's another hard thing for people to grasp, but maybe you can throw a few things in there. If you want, you could say, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about what's going on in factory farms. I don't like the way animals are being treated. You know, maybe they'll bring in the whole, what about far, uh, grass-fed animals and this and that? What about small farms? And you could say, you know, it's just a personal choice, but and, and sometimes you might even want to ask them. You you'd say, well, you know, I have a lot of opinions on this and I've done a lot of research. Would you like to have a discussion or do you want me to just give, kind of give you the bullet points? A lot of times people don't want to launch into this whole thing. So for me, it's all about thinking about your personal bullet points, having some solid research, being confident about it. Because a lot of times if you seem wishy-washy, they're going to think that you're just doing it because it's a trend or whatever, they're not going to take you seriously. So being really strong and secure in it. Um, and I think if you have that attitude, you're not going to come across snobby. It's all in the way you present yourself, and we all have opportunities to work on this. I, I still do, after, what, it's been almost 10 years for me. Um, actually, it's coming up on 9 for a vegetarian for me. And um, I still have, every time somebody asks me these questions, I, I take a moment to think about it. Sometimes people can be mean about it, and they can tease you, and they, they love to say, well, I love bacon, and I love cheese, and I could never give up that stuff. And a lot of times I just kind of don't say anything, you know? I think if you feed them into it, some people, no matter what you say, they're always going to have a counter. And you've got to remember, what are you going to get out of it, and what are they going to get out of it? Some people just want to get ramped up, and they want to justify their behaviors. Other people are honestly interested and open to giving it a try themselves. So you kind of have to judge that and be very gentle at the beginning of the conversation. But again, it comes down to you. So if you feel secure with yourself and your decisions and you feel confident about the research that you've done, then nobody should be able to influence you either way. And I think that if you were to do that in front of your mother, in front of your family on a regular basis, and she sees how mature you're being, especially Colby's instance as a 16-year-old, I think Parents are incredibly impressed, as are friends and other family members. So it's really an amazing opportunity to just kind of show off this uh, 
world around you and this lifestyle decision that you've made. And if this is a big change for you, this attitude can show how much of a shift you can take when you change your diet because the food we eat really impacts our mood, not just how we look and how we feel internally, but how we behave externally. And personally, I feel like vegetarian and veganism is all connected to the earth, connecting us to other people, connecting us to the ground we walk on, the air we breathe, and the animals around us, and a whole harmony factor. And the more we are calm and and just loving about it all, you're perpetuating that beautiful lifestyle that it can be. And uh, you never know what could happen from there on out. I hope that advice helps. I'm, I'm sure I can think of a lot more specifics. And um, I invite other people who are watching this to leave their own advice, comments, etc. below here on YouTube. If you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, I love that interaction. And Colby, I invite you to all these different social media areas to read other people's reactions to this video because I'm sure you'll get a lot out of it. Um, I hope that helps. And speaking of social media, you can find me Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Tumblr, Instagram, Pinterest, um, and Foursquare. You can find those links below here on YouTube. And of course, visit ecoveegangal.com. Thanks so much for watching. As always, thank you so much for your question, Colby. And to everyone else, if you have questions, I would love to hear them. And uh, that's it for now. Thanks. Bye.